You say so when you say to nature. so when you say human construct though I think of things like like math or logic like technically human constructs would be things like like jeez I don't know like male female like like pronouns right like really like, yeah, like gender. gender exactly gender so like I would I would say human constructs math math is a human construct but math doesn't mean human. Math doesn't mean humans, but humans invented math. Did we invent that? Or is math just in the universe? Math is a language that we use to speak to the universe. That's so, the deepest shit you'll hear all week. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we created math, and math doesn't mean does. We create morality, but does morality require us? Human construct. Okay. I kind of see what we're but doing. But, like, yeah. So, that's like a, a backdoor, yeah. Like, genders, we create genders within social constructs. But is it a human construct almost like, is it bound to nature? Maybe that should be more like some of that. Yeah. Like, nature, is it bound to us, or is it bound to, if you put a bunch of atoms together, are they going to live by morals? <laughs> when you get consciousness, Become more. Are different levels of consciousness? <laughs> You're really going do at they, it. <laughs> do they have different moralities? If we were to find aliens, mm -hmm. would they have a different morality? I would. I would say personally, one hundred percent, because they have a different environment. But if we have life, life that's like mine, like a, um, from the same environment, from the same molecules, mm -hmm. would that affect? Well, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily just like the environment. I just think that like if we were to find another alien civilization, let's just say it's like a really like high tech thing, right? Where they're like way older than us in terms of like species, right? Mm -hmm. In all reality, like if you look at like how much different we are in terms of what we believe is moral from like when we were like really young as a species, it's like a huge difference. And so I think it would be like stupid of me almost to say that. Yeah, aliens would have the same morals as us, even though they're like twice as old as us, right? Like, I would almost be stupid to say that like our morals wouldn't like we're at like the peak of morality. Like, we're, there's almost no way we discovered them. I would disagree with the first part you said. Uh -huh. uh, our morals have changed over time. Almost. Okay. All right. So, how long have humans been around? I don't know. Long time. 
thousands of years? Millions. Okay. Things like us, our ancestors are millions of years old. Okay. And I think the number is like five million. Okay. If this is a graph, if this is a graph of how long humans have been around, mm -hmm. tell me where on this graph math is included. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, then math was invented here, uh -huh. and then we figured out that we're not the center of space. Yeah. And then we figured out that we are the center of space, and then we figured out what um, agriculture is. Or yeah. Is. Yeah. And then we figured out what Netflix is. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I get what you're saying. Really, really tight. So this right here mm -hmm. changed over time. I don't, I don't think I just I, I think I disagree with that because in order to survive, mm -hmm. in order for your ancestors to survive, they have to do what? Like immoral things? Is that what you're trying to get at? No, not necessarily. If I'm immoral and I and I wake up every morning and say you're a bitch, mm -hmm. I don't want to do. You. Am I going to pass on children? Are you going to say to someone, say to a woman, a female, like, oh, yeah, well, go hit them up, go make me no. Or if I say that to women, right? Uh -huh. So yes. no. So you're not going to survive if you're in the world. In modern day? Throughout life, throughout okay. our history. So therefore, morality would have to sort of stay the same, but now, we have so many different. You know, I could walk up to a female. Yeah. Because back here we lived at Bushman, uh -huh. in the African plains. Uh -huh. We didn't have a home. We were nomads. Uh -huh. we, went, we went where the river went, we went where the birds went. Yeah. So then, you don't you don't live with hundreds of people, thousands of people, millions of people, billions of people. You live with twenty. Yeah. That you try. So in your tribe, you have babies. Mm -hmm. Then you're talking about that woman on the other tribe. Mm -hmm. But if you walked over to that woman, and before you got there, one of your tribe members went over and be like, that dude just isn't nice. Yeah. Whatever language they spoke. Mm -hmm. uh, that woman would never connect with them. I see. But I think you're also putting out there the idea that morality might be genetic. If you're saying that like, morality dies with the sheep, I don't think that's the case. I think what I was more what I was more so getting at is that if you think about it, like think about how like we used to like straight up France just was decapitating people until like the like 1920s or some shit like that, like some whack shit. In today's day, we're like, all right, decapitated decapitating people super wrong, definitely immoral. But like literally like 80 years ago, we were like, where bro, like <laughs> get the head off. Where is that? You know what I mean? Or even even like. Even way back, like, the Aztecs were, like, fucking tossing babies in the fire. Like, crazy whack shit. Where, in today's world, we'd be like, That's a big no, no. That's a nay. Uh-uh. Don't do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think, and that's why I said, in my opinion, if I was to, like, see, like, the progression of, like, in fact, if, like, France sort of thought everything was moral, the Aztecs stopped throwing babies in the fire was moral, like, in today's world, it would almost be weird for me to say that some, like, older civilization wouldn't have different rules. It's almost like, like, you hear, you'll hear, like, conservatives say a lot, like, someday, like, we'll look back on, like, today's age and be like, why are we having abortions? Whether or not that's true, I don't care. Well, I don't know, right? But it's almost like you can kind of, like, see it, right? Well, whether or not a civilization does certain things that are quote-unquote bad mm -hmm. doesn't make them... That, is, that does determine the morality. Mm -hmm. You can have civilizations that are immoral, mm -hmm. but they're not. Okay. It's a tough topic. Uh, so wait, give me words to describe them. <laughs> words to describe them. What would you say when someone is moral? 
I would say, like the first thing that comes to my mind when I think morality is like justice, like the scales of justice. So, I go again. <laughs> what is justice? The right thing to do. So what is the good what is it? No, like justice. Justice is right and wrong. Yeah, the line between right and wrong. And that's very wavering. Yeah. And like America's Constitution gave us the power as a government to determine mm -hmm. with leeway, with compromise, what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. So justice uses morality as a basis to determine what's right. But what is what is right? What is doing right? Go ahead, give me, give me something. Um, what is doing right? Doing this right. This is, see, now this, this goes super subjective, you would think. Well, there, there is, there's many different moral theories on like what is right. So like you have, um, what's, the, what's the one where it like benefits the, the just the general population? It's also like, oh, I don't know. But like, you know, whatever whatever produces the most good for the most people, right? So like when you have like the trolley problem, you're like, you know, you know the trolley problem, right? So if I had one person on a train track and, you know, uh, five people on another train track, yeah, exactly. And the train's headed for these five people, um, or I can hit a switch and it'll go to this person, this one guy right here. If you were talking about whatever that word is for the, that moral theory, you would say, well, I'm going to save most people by, you know, committing an action and actually changing the course. Yeah, but then, so it's going straight. Mm -hmm. It's headed towards the five people. Yeah. If you don't do anything, that's how nature unfolds. Mm -hmm. You didn't do anything. Well, you did. Wrong. Technically, if, so you you switch, switch, if you switch, you would have killed that person. Technically, an action is also an action. Is it the right action? If you were... This is, I'm pretty sure this is still an unanswered question oh, for it. philosophy. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> this is how my descent of this spot. Oh, with the trauma problem? I think but that's that, that his, his next one is, I like this one better. Yeah. If there was five workers on the, the railroad mm -hmm. and the train track or, or train car started going, and you were on a bridge about 500 feet back from it, and you saw that, but you also saw someone leaning over the bridge. Mm -hmm. And you could push them over the bridge, causing the train to stop really, really oh, hard, yeah. eventually hitting them and breaking up, and it wouldn't hit the five people. Yeah. Would you push them? Or would you just try to yell to the, the people? The it's, it's surprising because the trolley problem, most people say, we'll save the five people. But in that scenario, most people say, don't fucking push that guy. Yeah. Out. Right? Because that's, it, it's like the personal touch with the touch on Because this is like, you're out of the way. So most people, and whether or not you say which one you're going to do, whatever yeah. in the situation was like, do nothing. Yeah. And that freeze, you're going to get anxious, you're going to think about it too much, and it's going to happen too much. And I think what really deep down happens there is, me and Sage talked about this in a lot of stuff, so we talked about um, responsibility and like how you determine who's responsible. And the first thing we recognize is that people tend to give responsibility to the, what they believe caused the consequences. And so I think that when you're like, if you're flipping a switch, right, and you train goes off and kills just the one guy. It feels more so like, yeah, like I switched the lever, but then like the tracks cause it almost, like the movement of the tracks or whatever. But then if you push a guy, it's like, there's nothing after that. Like you push the guy, you know what I mean? So I think that, I think that might be part of it is almost like people don't necessarily feel like they 100% have to respond to the situation. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if any of you are following. I don't know if any of you are following this at all. I'm not. <laughs> That's for sure. We started with what is morality. Now we're at duty versus inclination. We're going off. I forget. I tell them, I forget that second point. It goes right. I, we could spend a whole episode on justice. We oh, could spend yeah, twelve well, episodes. If y'all want to watch this video, nice playlist. Look up. His name is Michael Sandel. It's almost like Sandel. And 
Michael Sandel does this. It's literally this playlist. Literally just either type in justice, type in Harvard University lecture, and you'll start to you'll see this. And it's a playlist of about 12 or 13 episodes. And he walks through John Locke and Manuel Kant. Manuel Kant does what is his definition of morality. But I haven't gone through it. The supreme principle of morality. What is the supreme principle of morality? And this is the first one. And the third one is something about inheritance. What is inheritance? The inheritance is this. Yeah. And you know, I think it's so, this is totally off topic, but isn't it so crazy that like, we haven't figured that stuff out? Like, I feel like there's, what, what civilization has done right now, exactly. What civilization has done right now, is we see like two paths. We see like two answers, right? And like one answer is like super simple, and it's just like, you ever hear the law of, I'm so sorry, man, right? Um, the law of like, whatever's the most simple is the best. Right. right. Like the simple sentence is always the best answer. Uh, right. Yes. Uh, uh, right. Uh, I, I never remember the words, but I remember what they are. Yes. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Something that uh, our, uh, raise, uh, Is it raise research? No, it's like. Oh man, I forget now. I was just listening to this. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but like the simple sentence is the best answer. I think so what society has done right now is done. How raise it? That's it. Hawkins or is it? That's it, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Hawkins. Hawkins? Hawkins? Whatever. Um, what society has done, in my opinion, is we just kind of said, like, for example, the, the responsibility thing. Like, we said, who caused that? They should be responsible. And I feel like that's, like, the yeah. simplest answer by far. When there's a million other things that go into, like, what actually would, you know, give somebody responsibility for consequences. When I think there's this other just like radical of just fucking absurd, absurd amount of information that you have to. Um, but there's in this world, there's just an absurd amount of just different pathways and different nodes of things and like all this, this incredibly complex conversation that needs to be had about these moral theories. And that sucks because I don't think that until humans get designed an artificial intelligence with some supercomputer that can process all of that, we'll ever get to that point. Exactly, it's way too complex. For our brains did not evolve to think about these problems. Yeah, that's the only thing. They survived to run away from this and to be the most fit, to have the most brain, did not evolve to think about this. Yeah, a supercomputer, oh my god, that's an entire different episode. Um, supercomputer is whether that is right or wrong. Yeah. You create a supercomputer that is smarter than every human brain connected, mm -hmm. you wouldn't even be able to, whatever you inserted, you know, because artificial intelligence that you're thinking of a supercomputer learns by itself. Mm -hmm. And if it can learn quicker than all the humans connected, mm -hmm. uh, I think they literally said it would take 20 seconds. Yeah, for it to learn all of humans' knowledge yes. ever. Yeah, everything. Like, everything on the internet. And then when you say, like, oh, every every second on the internet, about, I don't know, every day, one, one million gigabytes. But, well, let's just say the internet is like a zettabyte, like, period. Yeah, instant. And then that, that's 20 seconds after creation. And that takes 20, like, um, they were talking about creating one that how they would have two buttons to try to turn it off. Oh, yeah, we talked about this. But if you, if you try to, if you're like, okay, touch the button, within 20 seconds of you running over to the other button, then the computer itself would find a way to convince you, because you're stupid, <laughs> to not touch that button and shut it off. And even if you shut it off, it would be smart enough, I don't know whether, it would, be, it, would be, it would be smart enough to convince, or no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to contain, like containing a supercomputer is difficult. You would just say the hardware, just try to contain the hardware. No, like to create a supercomputer is more than just hardware. Mm -hmm. So you try to contain it, like put it in a box. Yep. Just say, oh, randomly, you just picked up a supercomputer, put it in a box. 
it's smart enough to convince you, no matter how much you try to avoid it, to convince you to take it outside the box. Or wasn't there, wasn't there like a theory too that like, if you were to have like, let's just say a quantum computer that's like powered by like fusion energy, right? The smartest thing ever invented. And let's just say for example, like, what was it, you like press the button, but like, it, it just, it actually just, like, there's something about the computer never existed or something like that. But, like the computer did something with time. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Oh, is that a movie? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, you press the button and it doesn't work. Yeah. That's what or you press the button and it just, be, because what it comes down to, which a lot of people, see, like, these problems are so hard because when things become too complex, eventually you can just start to say that everything is connected. Everything. And that is so unfathomably difficult mm -hmm. to wrap your head around because exactly. you literally cannot. Yep. Impossible to do it. When you say everything is connected, us writing on this board is affecting someone's thought processes in Japan. And when you say that, you're like, no, you're stupid. It's like, Everything is connected. You can connect this and you can just follow it. If you want a logical reasoning, it might take you 20 years to logical reason your way through it mm -hmm. to get to the end result, but it would take a supercomputer, a quantum computer. Think about all that. Yeah. That's why I read the book about effect, because what, like when you're thinking about this, and these these moral questions a lot of times are not whether it's like right or wrong, mm -hmm. it's more of like how much whiteness and how much wrong is it? Yep. You know? So it's never, it's like, oh, it's the, what do they call it, the better of two equals? The lesser of two equals. The lesser of two equals. Yeah, that's, when, that's exactly the thing that I feel like me and Santi were lying to crush a lot. When we're, we're, when we're like coming to like actual conclusion about something, we're like, oh, well, if it produces more good than bad, then that's the right option. Well, no, like, no shit. <laughs> Every, but everyone thinks good and bad differently, right? Like, that's the, where the subjectivity comes in. And that's the part that I don't like about, like, the modern day a little bit, is that everyone has, like, their own subjective, like, this moral relativism, relativism that we live in today is just beyond fucked, in my opinion. Like, if I could go back to, like, ancient, like, Greece, right? And just, like, fucking see how everyone just has, like, the same morals and, like, values and principles, you see, did, did that? I think so. You think? I really do. I think, well, or is I that think the only thing written down? <laughs> I don't know. The people who created the first history books, yeah. did they somehow impersonate? Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, young know, libertarians can do that a lot. Um, I'm not a libertarian. But, but that, well, that history. Think about this. Whoever wrote the first history books, you say history is fact, history is objective, you can't change it. Yeah. History is but a story. Yeah. Unless you have facts and figures with actual data. Yeah. But most of the time it's like, oh, they believe this. It's like, what do you mean they believe this? You tell me I believe something, a year from now I'm yeah. gonna But there's no like physical evidence of that. It's hard. In history, yeah, you have archaeology, physical evidence, you can measure it. Yeah. You can measure it in a lot of ways. But oh, they thought this, they did this, um, and there's a bunch of different reasons or different ways you can get there. Oh, maybe yeah. they tried this, you know? They probably used this for this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you could sort of reason your way through it. And there's a lot of smart people that get it spot on. Oh, yeah. But sure. there's, there's different, um, so people who wrote the first history books, did they somehow put their impersonation, their little word, their little voice into what they were writing? Probably, I think that's almost, changing what know. history was. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next person who wrote it changed mm -hmm. a little bit. And that's why you have a bunch of different books. And it's, that's why science is a thing. Yeah. And logically reasoning between one. But then again, you have deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is, oh, inductive reasoning is using evidence to deduce yeah. A claim. Yes. Deductive reasoning is using different... Well, deductive reasoning, like, an inductive argument is one that's just like, 
if this, then this, right? Yeah. Uh, so, or, yeah, the if law then comes, comes from his conclusion, and then deductive arguments are like comes, comes from his, this is probably true. We have deduced through these premises yeah. that this is probably the truth, but it's not like a finite 100% yeah. this is the thing. And see that? You want me to write this on the board? Don't do it. <laughs> Do you remember this? Science? Never heard of it. Oh, uh, no. Oh, okay. yeah. So I'll make this short and simple. Give me things that are on the left and right. Oh, oh what you say, Matt? Oh, I heard you. Oh, what? History? Oh, my God. You're making me write too quick. Oh, my God. Oh, no, oh, surgery? No, not surgery. Just science? No, science never heard of it. Let's call it. Give me work. That's uh, not science. Chemistry. Chemistry. First thing I thought in his room. Alright, uh, give me another thing. Uh, let's say history with some. Um, well, for us, I don't know. Yeah, like morals. Yeah. I don't know if science does a moral. Can science reason morals? Sure. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. Um, how about history, culture? Culture. Um, what about. Well, and, and it goes on, right? Yeah. And the professor says, what's the most important thing on this board? Not the entire board. On this little square. And you might say your own preference of whatever it is. However, the most important thing on this line is... So when you talk about history and deducing things and inducing things, that's why science can never, it can maybe possibly explain what religion is, what culture is, what history is, but it will never be right for a scientist to call someone wrong. Now if they're doing terrible things, obviously that's just morality, that's just something humans accept as moral. But religion then therefore has no right to determine what science is. So your religion says that we should no longer or we should kill the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, that should be something that you should be like, yeah, no, no. That's something you should attack. But you should never go back and forth. So the line that separates both of them is the most important thing. Yeah. So if you talk about and I, I listen to an atheist and a Muslim debate. And the atheist was all about inductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. And he called deductive reasoning the bull crap. And they were like, well, in math, you deduce a bunch of things. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. you, know, you use deduction. <laughs> yeah, you know? deduction. And, uh, and all the Muslim was doing was reading from the book, deducing. That's how the, the author of the book wrote it, and that's what he believes. So when you start putting in beliefs and feelings into what's right and what's wrong, yeah. you can't say they're wrong, but if they, they do what, what? Give me things that we would stop as humanity if it were perceived as wrong. Kill uh, it. Yeah, murder obviously. Uh, would this, yeah, go ahead. Right, any infringement of just like a basic human right. Aha, uh -huh. so then, what, then the question is, what is human right? What is a basic human yeah. I, I think that... What did John Locke say? I don't know if it's saying in this shit. <laughs> what did John Locke say? Uh, that it was life, liberty, and the rights of only life. Property. which he contradicts himself a little bit. But you could go through each one of these. Um, mm -hmm. Talks about life, liberty, and property. So you have a basic right to property. Now you can deduce that taxation is slavery. Do you want me to do it for you? I believe 
I want to practice something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a belief, right? Yeah. However, if you disagree with that, if why, <coughs> why, okay, let's go really subjectively now. Why do you believe taxation is um, forced labor or slavery? Well, because I think that. Do you think that's wrong? I, I don't necessarily think that taxation as a whole is wrong. Why? I, well, because it's necessary for society Why? in the modern day. Because without a, like a social safety net and without us as a, as a whole community to be able to come together and provide resources to one another for the greater good so that everyone else can you know, do what they need to do to live a good life. Who does that? Who manages all of that? The government. Yeah. I think that's one of the government's only jobs. So if you I say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't mind me in my sometimes controversial ideas. Um, <laughs> so if you said the government is, and then what what happens if the government is corrupt? Do they still have you to turn around? Um, you could still have. We're not. No. <laughs> well, we, well, so on these go off things, oh. we're not necessarily going for principle. We're literally just trying to learn that shit. We're just what we have done pretty thoroughly. <laughs> we're not. We're nowhere close to what morality is. We didn't even look at the Google definition yet. We never came up with our own. Uh, anyway. This is why I vibe. This is this is the kind of person that I vibe with. Yeah. Uh, we're both a little ADD. Yeah. Uh, focusing on one thing is just too much. <laughs> it's just. I'm too creative, creative to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, so he he says John Locke. John Locke, yeah. That in his book that he wrote about life, liberty, the basic human rights. Yes. That you people can take your property. Mm -hmm. When people take your property or your money, how do you get that money? You do labor. So therefore if you do labor and someone takes a portion of what you gain from that, mm -hmm. it's almost like forced labor. Yes. Well, it, it's because of the fact that with taxation comes the government's army. And in my opinion, it's like, so in like a mutual contractual agreement, if you say, hey, I have this black pen, do you want, do you want it? And I'll, you trade me for your blue pen, right? And then we both agree to that. What the government says is, you're going to work, and you're going to help the greater good, and we're going to fucking kill you. <laughs> we're going to you in jail for the rest of the Here's a question for you. Quick question. Not really that quick. But, Okay. <laughs> I need the mic. Oh, okay. All right. So, I'll make the story. I don't know if you're right. A woman is, I forget the name, a couple that is not able to have a child. Not for what woman to have a child? Do you know? Uh, surrogate? Surrogate woman, yes. Goes to a surrogate woman, and it's an actual story. You look it up by all these names. Um, you go to find the surrogate woman. And servant women, they, they get they all together yeah. and they make a contract, written out contract, that the husband mm -hmm. will give um, a portion of his sperm to the woman so it can be artificially in, in incented and raise his baby or something for nine months. Yeah. Birth. All this contract she signs and fails now. Yeah. Nine months thereafter, the woman has the baby. And then, do you know what happens next? She wants to keep it. Yes. Damn it. I hate this already. Whose property is it? Um, There's two different arguments. There is. There is a contract. You do not break that. Yeah. Or, you can never expect what this woman is going to feel. She doesn't have the right information to reasonably, logically, understand how she's going to feel once she has this baby. And this woman already had two kids. Oh, the one who's the the surrogate. Surrogate. She already had two kids of her own. Oh, and, she's being, and she wants this other child because you can't say that you had, she had no idea, she did not have all the information to correctly understand the emotional effect of this baby. I would disagree in the fact that because so you you're a contract person. Well, not necessarily even that. Yes, I agree with the contract, but I also disagree, I just disagree with the idea that she didn't know what she was being into because she already had two kids. But at the same time, let's just say for theoretically she doesn't have two kids, 
I think that the contract still goes because fuck you for not thinking ahead for the future about, all right, like, no matter what, I'm not going to get attached to this baby. I'm yep. getting paid to just hold on to the baby for nine months, and be a surrogate, and then give it back to the parents. Also, the fact that she thinks in any way, shape, or form that the lady who already has two kids should just fucking keep this one away from the couple who donated their egg and sperm to make this human life, who don't, who can't have a baby otherwise, that you should keep that? No. Tell me this shit, tell me that bitch didn't keep the baby. No. <laughs> I'll add one more layer. Uh -huh. The two infertile people paid this woman $10,000. Yeah. Yeah. So, double fuck her. Who keeps the baby? So if you say they keep the baby, you're saying that baby semi worth ten thousand dollars. Well, I think it's ten. But I think it's worth ten thousand dollars to let somebody else raise the baby. But, yeah, but I'm unable to. I yeah, think that process is worth ten thousand dollars. I don't think you can put. What is the, what is the objective right here? This one's a court. Brother. I'm going to tell you the court reasoning. Um, but it went to a local court. Okay. Did it go all the way to the Supreme Court? Yeah, Supreme Court of New Jersey. Um, the local court, I don't want to forget, I don't want to watch detail. The local court pretty much just said this is supreme. Yeah, like there's because no Because it deals with money. Yeah. And you're putting a value on a human life. See, I disagree. But go on, yeah. I'm using my property to give you, to give you, I'm using my money, my property, to give to you, for you to give me something in return. Now, I write a both sign a contract. And that contract is not upheld. Mm -hmm. What you need for a contract is all the information beforehand. Mm -hmm. And if not, it's not a valid contract. It's not a le legal binding yes. um, document. Because if I told you, oh, we're going to make a contract that you are going to walk out that door and I'm going to give you $20. You're like, oh yeah, I'm going to walk out the door and give you $20. Mm -hmm. or, Something silly or stupid like that, you walk in the door and you're done. You didn't, have, <laughs> you didn't have all the information beforehand before you made that decision. Yeah. So it was right for me to make that contract, to uphold that contract. So. Yeah. Um, and so I went to the Supreme Court, and pretty much what they did is they laid out both problems, pretty much. And they didn't really come to a giant conclusion, but their conclusion was. Uh, the conclusion was that there is no value on an SOT. This was a written contract, but she didn't have all the information for it. There's no way that she could have before thought exactly how she was going to feel mm -hmm. as a personal mother now mm -hmm. to this, this child. Mm -hmm. But she did sign a contract. And there was money involved. So she received the money. However, they thought it would be in the best interest for the child if the two infertile parents had it. Better economic status, more right because it's they 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 can never have a baby unless they adopt. And they chose to do this sort of mother. Yeah. And she agreed. And she already has two child, children of her own. Yeah. There's a bunch of different factors that uh, yeah. played into that. Like the surrogate's father left, so now she has a different. So it's like, is that household okay for this new? What open the bed? And so that played into that sort of thing. But that's just property is insane to look at. But I think it's fucked up. See, I I don't even want you the child, like, that life as the property. I would much prefer viewing it as a transaction for a process. It's almost like I'm giving you my fucking shoes and your cobbler and fix them for me and give them back. That's what, in my opinion, that's what the surgeon did. She took the egg and sperm, put it in her fucking... For the surgeon. Yeah, yeah, the surgeon. She fucking yeah. cooked that shit. Shouldn't just fucking give it back. I mean, but yeah, that... <laughs> you imagine... The 20, 30 seconds that it takes to sign a contract and hand over ten thousand dollars. Well, if you give a surrogate mother and think about that, that was your life, you're a dumb 
Edge, if you fucking just signed that shit. <laughs> Not yeah. <laughs> but nine months of this gruesome, yeah, painful, annoying experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For ten thousand dollars. And you know what? She's the one who decided that ten thousand dollars is gonna be worth it. She already had the two kids. She knew what she was getting to with the, with the experience wise of it. I would assume. So I don't know. That's a very interesting topic, but right? in my opinion, fuck that surgery page. No, you would love you would love this. Yeah. Well I I, I watch a lot of philosophy videos. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you should know. follow the philosophy way. R slash philosophy. So good. I'm so good. So good. I don't know. God. God. What? Who did? <laughs> there's no, there's a lot of things you can do. Actually, it's more of a question. Oh, free will sort of comes in. We're not getting that shit. I know. No, no. <laughs> Put that thing down. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, free will sort of comes into liberty, right? Oh, yeah. totally. And For sure. life. Yeah. But yeah. But don't erase that. Take a picture of it. Go yeah. to the gram. You're welcome. Um. Do you want to talk about it here? No, man. No, I literally could talk about this for hours. I know. Man. Literally hours. I have talked about this. I, I believe you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very interesting laying out the problem. But we didn't even touch what it was going You know what that means? This problem is. <laughs> Two, not necessarily. I don't want to be pessimistic. I'm very optimistic, so. Um, being optimistic as a, as a forethought thinker. Is Sometimes we can figure it out. I'm sure. Figuring out doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be perfect or right at all. Or that's the great thing about philosophy. Or our right, our definition. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what I don't like about so many people like disagreeing with like opinions and then not just not giving any value to that opinion because it's an opinion period and it's a different it's a different look on the world, it's a different mm-hmm. perspective. And I think that's such a valuable thing in terms of just philosophy period. Do you know why diversity, I don't want to say why diversity is important, but do you know like the sub-definition of diversity? Or I you could argue the definition of diversity. What is it that people bring when they bring diversity? I why is diversity like, I don't want to say why it's important, because the definition of correct is not answer that. Yeah, I would just call it, you know, different qualities. Qualities. Yeah. We, we played, according to the Director of International Relations here at Wilkes, mm-hmm. um, we have, it's, it's called, um, diversity is, the different rules everyone plays by, or you play by. Hmm. So, is that, uh, so we played a game of Uno. Okay. But we were all silent. Okay. So you come to the you go you join a table with a pack of Uno cards in it in a box. See it. Uh-huh. Silent. So you cannot you pull out the rule rule sheet, maybe you open it up, if someone opens up, so it'll just start pointing. Uh-huh. And you you unfold it and some people may look at the rules. Yeah. Other people might not. You might enforce those rules, you might have different rules, you might have stacking, I don't know, but, you know. Might have oh stacking. yeah, with, like the plus twos and shit? Yeah, the plus, yeah, yeah. that's just crazy. <laughs> so you're like, I'm a plus two. <laughs> so, but some people don't play like that, you yeah. know? And some people uh, play when you get called out for Uno, that you have to take the entire discard. Yeah. Some people, the rules say two cards, other people say one card. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. When you're silent, you can't say, Uno! No, no! no. <laughs> so you have to do the different tables. Oh, that's we, diabolical. we had a bunch of different tables, right? All playing this game. And what we came up with was everyone has different rules that they play by in life. But if we're talking about Uno, everyone who plays the rules and different experiences. Some people have never played it. Mm-hmm. Some people have played it every day of their life. <laughs> And you know, everyone plays different. Yeah. You, know, you come from different areas, you play stacking. You want to win. You're, you're very competitive. Yeah. Other people are very concerned. Can you hide your card? Can you not? Uh, cards below the table or above? 
um, counterclockwise or clockwise. Simple things, you know? And, or there was, um, like, people that never played it before, um, when they played it like a nine on nine without the same colors, they're like, wait, I thought we were playing with the same color. Oh, and now it changes their mind. Mm -hmm. So the reason why diversity is so great for us is because it brings a different rule set. Yeah. And diversity can also be tied into opinions. Mm -hmm. you, bring, diversity of thought. you bring opinions to the world, whether they're right or wrong, yeah. they're different rules. Yeah. And as a collection of people, as a society, we can decide which rules are correct and incorrect. Yeah. And reason that way. Yeah. And but I've always I've always said to myself in the shower, of course, because it's the only place that I shower thoughts, hashtag shower. Um, that like when, when I'm making these, like I, I've always thought like you know, I get fucking zero comments on the videos so far. But someday I'm gonna have haters. Right? And someday those people are gonna be like, yo, this guy's so fucking off. Like the the, the principle and the conclusion he came to is literally so wrong, like, fuck this shit. And the people that would even think that way are the people that don't value the fact that we came to completely period. And that it's something different. Yeah, valuing a difference in something, instead of hating it because it's different, is two totally, totally polar opposite things. And that, in my opinion, is what has driven a lot of the divides that we see today, especially in America. There one, right there. Yep. People who are very strong religious hate science. Yep. People who are very scientifically minded, I'm not talking about everyone, but some people hate religion. Yep. And believe it's, it should be gone. Yep. Obliterated from this planet. When in reality, you should be thankful that there is even a second option. Yep. But then that goes into the question. All right, we'll cut this shit off. Okay, that goes into the question. The question of do I don't want to go off the screen. Do we have you have like the whole board? I think. Do we have mm, just in life? Do we have too many choices? What is what is a choice? What is it to have your choice? Yeah, the ability to choose different energies. Stop it. What's the definition of many? And we'll see you next time on. He forgot the name. It's the principal paragon. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Thank you again. Oh, I wasn't even going to say the name. Oh, I thought you did. I forgot the name. Yeah. I was like, I got you. I'm here. I I'm saving you. All right, so yes, thank you again so much for watching. Uh, please, again, always leave some helpful uh, discourse down in the comments, uh, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Uh, the next episode should be me and Rafael, maybe Jason, uh, talking about finishing up what we think, uh, we hope we're finishing up, uh, what we think about responsibility, and um, who, how do you really decide who's responsible for things, and whether or not what we're doing today, or what we observe we're doing today, is the right thing. So, I'll see you guys next time.